Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to see how we can use Ampere's Law to find the magnetic field inside a solenoid. So what we're doing here is imagining we have a tube and we coil a wire around it and then we have a current running through the wire and the best way to find the magnetic field direction inside the solenoid which is also sometimes called a coil because you're coiling up wire is you take your fingers in the direction of the current of the wire uh, of the current in the wire and then your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field so you can see that magnetic field will go through the coil through the uh, through the uh, what we call solenoid from right to left now what we're going to do is we're going to take a cross-sectional view of this we're going to cut the solenoid exactly in half we're going to look at it notice at the top the current will be into the board and at the bottom the current will come out of the board and what we're doing now is we're going to find a path around which we're going to integrate and so the path is right here we're going to go around the path like this and so that means that we're going to use the uh, Ampere's law that says that the line integral closed loop line integral of b dot dl is equal to mu sub naught times i enclosed so first we'll concentrate on the left part of that equation well first of all we're going to integrate four times we're going to get from there to there from there to there from there to there and from there to there however outside the coil the magnetic field is virtually non-existent it's very weak it spreads out over a very large region and so therefore we can assume approximately that the magnetic field outside is equal to zero inside you can see that the path over which we're going to integrate is going to be in this direction but we know that the B field the magnetic field is in this direction that means that they're perpendicular so the DL which would be in this direction over here so that would be the DL right there and the DL over here would be in this direction that would be the DL in this direction notice that the DL and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and remember that B dot DL is equal to B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them and in this case for the two sides paths right there we know that the angle is 90 degrees so B times the L times the cosine of 90 degrees and of course the cosine of 90 degrees is zero so therefore this whole thing is equal to zero so integrating over the sides we get zero integrating at the top we get zero we only get a result when we in integrate along the bottom notice if my DL is in this direction that's in the same direction as the magnetic field so therefore B dot DL is B times the L times the cosine of zero degrees which is simply B times the L so in this case it's going to be the strength of the magnetic field times the length the path length so let's call it L so that's B times L is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed now you say well let's see here um, doesn't matter really how far down I come I can put the the path at the bottom here I can put the path at the top it doesn't seem to make any difference where I put this path so therefore it looks like the strength of the magnetic field should be uniform anywhere inside the coil and that's generally true except for the edge effects as you get to the outside or to the edge of the outside here inside a coil the magnetic field is fairly uniform throughout the coil all right now we still need to find I enclosed well notice that each one of these wires carries a current I and there's n number of them so we can say that I total or I enclosed is going to be the current through each wire times the number of wires so let's call n the number of wires which means we can write this as I times n the number of wires another way if we can look at that is we can look at the linear line density so we can say that n the density of the wires is equal to the total number divided by the length because it's linear density or we can say therefore that um, the no total number is equal to the number of wires per unit length times the length by multiplying L times small n so we can then write the equation as B times L is equal to mu sub naught times the current in the wire times n times L and then the L's cancel on both sides of the equation so finally the strength of the magnetic field B is equal to mu sub naught times the current in the wire times the line density or the wire density the number of wires per unit length and that's then the magnetic field inside a coil now to get a good picture of that because you might get the, the feeling that it's the exact same strength everywhere that's really not true if we think of the coil being like this for example 
and then we draw, let's say that this is the halfway point, like that, and then we draw a graph that represents the magnetic field inside the coil, it will reach a maximum at the very center, and then it will drop off towards the side. Not a lot initially, so if at the very top, the B field strength is equal to mu sub naught times I times the number of wires per unit length, notice that by the time you get to the outside edge of the coil, typically at this point, the B field has dropped to half that value, mu sub naught I times N, and then if you go farther out, you can see that the B field continues to drop out kind of like that, and by the time you get out another uh, length of, co of the coil outside the coil itself, then the magnetic field drops down to almost zero. So notice that the strength of the field does diminish as you get close to the edge. You can think of it more maybe in terms of this, where the lines are very dense together, but as you reach the outside, they tend to diminish as the B field starts changing direction and start diverging, so to speak, as the magnetic field lines leave the coil. So just to make sure that you don't get the false impression that it's exactly uniform all the way through, that in essence, what you can see is that the, that the magnetic field does become weaker towards the edges of the coil and is strongest right at the center. It's not a big drop off, but it is significant enough to mention it. And so that's how we find, using Ampere's law, the magnetic field inside the solenoid or inside a coil.